This is a pre-lecture video on the Fisher Equation for the course Global Business Economics. I'm David Frankel, a professor at Melbourne Business School. Let's get started. This video actually studies two topics. The first is the relation between interest rates on the one hand and inflation on the other. The second is how households and firms change their behavior in response to changes in interest rates. Let's start with some definitions. The nominal interest rate, denoted little i, is a payment you will either receive or pay per period of time, usually per year. For instance, the advertisement that is pictured promises a nominal interest rate of 2.5% per year. That means that if you deposit $100 at the beginning of the year, at the end, you will have $102.50. By and large, when you see an interest rate quoted in the media or an advertisement, it refers to a nominal rate, the number of dollars that you will pay or receive over a given period of time. If you are promised a nominal interest rate of I, then over a year's time, a dollar in your savings account will grow to one plus I dollars. However, over that time, inflation will have eroded the purchasing power of a dollar. That is, a dollar next year is worth less than a dollar today. That means that even though you will have one plus I dollars in a year, you may not be able to buy as much with them as you could today with a single dollar. The graph in the middle of the slide depicts the declining value of an Australian dollar over recent decades. It also suggests a connection between this decline and the growth of the money supply. That relationship is studied in detail in a later pre-lecture video, which is titled The Quantity Equation. To correct for the decline in the dollar's purchasing power, one uses a different type of interest rate. It is called the real interest rate. We will denote this interest rate by the Greek letter rho. To define it, let pi denote the inflation rate. The real interest rate rho is then defined as the difference between the nominal rate i and the inflation rate pi. This definition is called the Fisher equation after economist Irving Fisher. For instance, if the nominal interest rate i is 5% and inflation pi is 2%, then the real interest rate rho is 5 minus 2 or 3%. The real interest rate can be negative. For instance, if the nominal interest rate i is 1% and inflation pi is 3%, the real interest rate rho is minus 2%. Having defined real and nominal interest rates, we now turn to their economic effects. We'll start with consumers. Suppose a consumer named Beth has a dollar and wishes to buy some ice cream. Beth now faces a choice. She can buy a scoop today for a dollar, or she can save her dollar, let her earn interest, and spend the result on ice cream after a year has passed. Since the nominal interest rate is I, she will have one plus I dollars in a year. But the price of ice cream will have risen at the inflation rate of pi. So instead of costing a dollar, a scoop of ice cream will cost one plus pi dollars. How many scoops can Beth now purchase? The answer is the amount she has to spend, one plus I dollars, divided by the price of ice cream, which is one plus pi dollars. It is a mathematical fact that if i and pi are small, then 1 plus i divided by 1 plus pi is approximately equal to 1 plus i minus pi, or equivalently 1 plus the real interest rate rho. It follows that if she saves her money, Beth's purchasing power will rise at the rate rho rather than the rate i. Thus, the real interest rate rho captures the rate at which the balance of a savings account grows in terms of purchasing power. Let's now think about how this affects consumer behavior. If the real interest rate rho is low, then the purchasing power of saved money does not rise very quickly. This gives consumers an incentive to consume now rather than to save. So if the central bank manages to lower the real interest rate rho, we can expect consumers to increase their consumption today. This gives an immediate boost to the economy, but there is a cost. Since consumers are saving less, consumption will be lower in the future. 
Hence, a central bank typically lowers interest rates only when the economy is relatively weak. The real interest rate rho is also what a firm looks at when it decides how much to invest. We'll show this in a simple example. Let's suppose a firm is considering an investment project. The project involves buying a machine that costs a dollar and then using the machine for a year. At the end of the year, the firm would sell the machine together with all the output that the machine produced during the year. Let's assume that the firm has no funds of its own. Thus, it must borrow a dollar now to buy the machine. In a year, it will have to repay one plus I dollars since the nominal interest rate is I. Let V be the value of the machine's annual output in today's prices. At the end of the year, the firm will be able to sell the output for one plus pi times V dollars because the price of output rises at the inflation rate of pi. We will also assume, realistically, that a used machine is not worth as much as a new one. In particular, after a year's use, the machine will be worth delta percent less than a new machine. Delta is called the depreciation rate. For a vehicle, for instance, delta is usually in the range of 10 to 15 percent. But while the machine is depreciating, the price of new machines is also rising at pi percent per year. The sales price of the machine takes both effects into account. It is the price of a new machine, one plus pi dollars, times the value of an old machine as a percentage of a new one, which is one minus delta. Let's now write down the criterion that the firm uses to evaluate the project. The investment is profitable as long as the revenue, one plus pi times V, from selling the machine's output, plus the revenue, 1 plus pi times 1 minus delta from selling the machine itself exceeds the loan repayment of 1 plus i dollars. That is, if 1 plus pi times v plus 1 plus pi times 1 minus delta exceeds 1 plus i. Dividing both sides by 1 plus pi, the condition holds as long as v plus 1 minus delta exceeds 1 plus i divided by 1 plus pi, which in turn is approximately equal to one plus the real interest rate rho. We then subtract one from both sides to obtain the final condition. The firm does the project as long as V minus delta exceeds rho. In other words, the project is worthwhile as long as the real interest rate rho is less than the machine's net output, which equals its gross output V less its depreciation rate of delta. For instance, suppose the machine's annual output is worth V equals 15% of the machine's initial cost. Suppose also that the depreciation rate delta is 10%. That is, after a year, the machine's value is only 90% of the value of a new machine. The machine's net output V minus delta is thus 15% minus 10%, or simply 5%. By the prior slide, the investment is worthwhile as long as the real interest rate rho is less than the machine's net output of 5%. In this way, a decline in the real interest rate rho makes more projects worthwhile and thus stimulates investment. We conclude that a decline in the real interest rate rho stimulates both current consumption and current investment. This in turn leads to an increase in output in the economy. Summarizing, the important decisions of how much to invest and how much to consume depend on the real interest rate rho, not on the nominal rate I. However, there is an important decision for which the nominal rate does matter. Let's say you have a certain amount of wealth. How much should you hold in cash versus in a savings account that bears interest? In this case, your decision should depend on the nominal interest rate I. The reason is simple. A savings account pays the nominal interest rate I. Cash, in contrast, pays zero interest. The difference in interest rates is I minus zero, or simply I. Thus, the higher is the nominal interest rate I, the stronger is the incentive to hold less in cash and put more of your funds into your savings account. 
while this effect is hard to detect in low inflation countries like Australia. It can become important in periods of high inflation since these tend to be accompanied by high nominal interest rates. This concludes the pre-lecture video on the Fisher equation. Thank you for watching.